another beautiful day to everyone. Kumusta mo? How, how, how are you? Okay, so I'm Pastor Julness once again. Welcome to our online training. This is our session 11 since we started our online training. This is our 11th session, but this is episode, episode 2 for this series. Okay, uh, before I'd like to proceed, uh, gusto ko pong magpasalamat sa mga nag-feedback, no? nakaka-encourage that there were those who were really changed by God's Word. Yun, nung last training natin, yung mga nawala na yung first love. No? Thank you for, for saying na dahil sa training, no? dahil sa Word ni Lord, bumalik po uli yung fire. And some of you uh, said na gusto nyo talagang bumalik ang fire. Siyempre lahat tayo, that's our that's really our desire. Ayaw natin na uh, we keep serving the Lord na wala na pong meaning sa buhay natin. Okay? So, thank you. And we would like to, to ask you for more no, feedback. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we offer to you another training. Father, it is our desire that as a church, both individually and corporately, Kami po talaga yung church that you have intended for us to be in the first place. Salamat for reminding us once again. We ask you to open our hearts so we can receive your word. The kind of church that we must be for this episode. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? So ang session po natin ngayon is we're off to episode 2, yung pangalawang church po. And ano nga yun, no? Those of you who have been reading uh, Revelation, ano yung pangalawang church? It's Smyrna. So, ganun pala yung pronunciation on Smyrna. Okay? So, Smyrna is labeled, ano nga yung Ephesus? The loveless church. No? Yung abandon nila ang kanilang first love. Pero, pwede pa rin tayong bumalik, di ba? Kung nawal, no, abandon natin yung first love. Ang Smyrna ngayon po, ito yung suffering church okay suffering church but no it's a suffering church but it remained no or it has remained faithful amidst its persecution bakit sila nagsasuffer dahil merong persecution i'll i'll i'd like to share with you this convo okay may dalawang magkaibigan na nag-uusap no convo ito yung convo nila sabi ng isa Ano para sa iyo ang pinakamatindi na suffering? Sabi nung isa. No, sabi naman ng isa, ano? Sabi nung isang friend, sabi niya, ang pinakamatindi na suffering ay ito. Yung akala mo, minahal ka niya, pero hindi pala. Yun daw ang pinakamatinding suffering. Pero sabi naman ng isang friend, oh no friend, wala yan. Ito yung mas matinding suffering. Ano yun? Ito yung suffering... <laughs> from lack of vitamin C. Kasi alam mo ano ang C? Christ. O ba? So pag wala kang vitamin C, magsasuffer ka talaga. Pero pag may vitamin C ka, nandiyan si Christ, kayang-kaya natin kahit anong suffering. O religious, okay. So anyway, no, kwento lang yon ng dalawang magkaibigan. Pero ito yung tanong ko sa inyo, will you still love Jesus amidst persecution? Will you still love Jesus amidst intense suffering? Sabi nga nila, life is full of heartaches. Agree or disagree? But, no, suffering is inevitable. Ibig sabihin, di talaga natin maiiwasan ang suffering. Lalo na daw kung nag-asawa ka na. <laughs> okay, no? So, how do we respond to suffering? Paano tayo mag-respond? So, titingnan natin ngayon ang church na ito. Smyrna. Okay? So let's read our text. It's in Revelation 2.8, 2 to 10. Okay? Sabi dito, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, This thing says the first and the last. Okay? Sino tong first and the last? Of course, this is Jesus. And siya din itong who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich. Wow. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not. 
Next slide. But a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of the, those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Okay, 10 days. May my meaning yan. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. Okay. So, ang Smyrna po, no? Ito yung lugar na may maraming mga Jews. Okay? Ang daming Jews dito, pero they were hostile. Galit sila sa mga Christians. At mababasa natin sa Bible na ang dami nilang mga slanderous or yung mga false accusations against the Christians. Kung nagbasa kayo ng Bible, ang sabi nila, mga Christians daw troublesome. Ito yung, yung mga slanderous accusations. So, troublesome daw. Kung saan may mga Christians, may gulo. Okay? Tapos yung iba sabi, mga Christians are rebellious. Hindi nagbabayad ng tax. Yung mga ganon. Ang mga Christians pa, no, are arsonists. Sila daw yung nagasunog, no, ng mga, ng mga buildings. Ang mga Christians daw racist. No, yun ang mga false accusations by the Jews, no, against Christians. That led to the persecution of a lot of Christians by the Roman authorities. Ito po nakasituate ang Smyrna at that time. In fact, mababasa natin sa Acts 14.2. Sabi doon, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up, no, gi, ano nila, gi, gi stir up nila ang, ang mga Gentiles, that Gentiles, they refer to the Romans and poison their minds against the brethren. So nasa Bible po talaga, no, yung persecution, noon pa very early on ng Christianity. And, but Jesus, no, revealed himself to this persecuted persecuted, sorry, Christians in Smyrna, he revealed himself to be this, number one. Sabi ni Lord, I am the first and the last. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Anong comfort ito ang sinasabi ni Lord sa mga persecuted Christians at that time? Sabi ni Jesus, I'm the first and the last, which means I've been there. Galing na ako dyan. Nauna na ako nag-suffer sa inyo. ba? Yan ang sinasabi ni Lord. Ako ang first and the last. Pero sabi ni Lord, just follow my lead, no? I have given you the example. You can do it. Kung nakayanan ko, makakayanan nyo rin. Okay? So yun po ang comforting words ni Jesus to the Christians in Smyrna. Ako yung first and ako din yung last. Ibig sabihin, I am in control. So kayang-kaya nyo yan. Okay? Did we get that po? Okay. And then another revelation ni Jesus kung sino siya sa mga persecuted Christians in Smyrna. Sabi niya, I was dead, no? Namatay ako and I came to life. 'Di ba? It's so comforting na kahit ano pang nangyayari sa inyo, no? 'Yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus, yung mga hardships niyo, yung sufferings niyo ngayon are but for a time. Temporary lang 'yan. Katulad ko namatay ako, pero nabuhay din ako. ba? So sabi, sinasabi ni Jesus that your sufferings are just temporary, very short compared to the eternal life that is awaiting you. Okay? So, grabe po no, yung comfort ni Jesus to this church. And ito po yung mga commendations ni Jesus to Smyrna. No? Uh, apat na peace po. Tingnan natin yung four peace. Oy, four peace. Okay. So, number one, a commendation ni Lord to Smyrna is Jesus knows their performance. Alam ni Lord yung mga ginagawa nila. Their works. No? Kahit maliliit na bagay. No? We'd like to emphasize this. Kahit ano pa yung ginagawa natin. No, we think no, maliit lang, not significant. Pero nakikita yan ni Lord lahat. He sees and no, He sees and He knows everything that we do for Him. Okay. Sabi nga ng Hebrews 6.10 For God is not unjust to forget your work. Grabe si Lord, no? He has a very long and powerful memory. He's not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. Pero dapat po talaga labor of love. Okay? 
may qualifying ano po talaga no anong klase yung mga ginagawa natin dapat out of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister so when we do anything for our brothers and sisters it should be out of love and god remembers that okay so nakita ni lord ang labor of love no ng mga tao, mga Christians sa Smyrna. Then number two, Jesus knows your pain. Sino dito may pain ka sa puso mo ngayon? No? Alam ni Lord yan. Yung mga tribulations mo, yung afflictions, yung anguish, mga persecution. Alam na alam ni Lord yan. At alam nyo ba po, no? our sufferings, our afflictions could come in different ways. Minsan, marital suffering. Nag-asawa ka nga, nagsasuffer ka naman. Just very recently, I've, ang dami kong, I'm privy, no? yung mga, mga confessions ng mga wives. I can only speak for the wives, sorry men. No? Yung mga wives na sinasabi nila, grabe ang akong bana indifferent. Ay, makasakit, no? no? Ang akong bana, kanang, kanang, Dili thoughtful. Oy, ang akong ba na insensitive. Nag-suffer emotionally. Sino dyan? Makarelate kayo mga, mga may asawa. Oh, so, so yung mga walang asawa, mag-asawa pa rin kayo. Okay? No? So marital suffering, domestic suffering, financial suffering. Sino dyan nag-suffer financially? Especially ngayong COVID-19. No? Yun nga sinabi ko, emotional suffering. Grabe ang daming nababasag ang puso, no? And katulad ng sinabi ko, I can only speak for the wives, lalo na yung mga asawa na nagsasabi na napaka-cold ng husband ko sa akin. Cold treatment, that's really worse, no? Yung bang parang nandiyan ka nga, pero parang wala ka dyan. Ay, okay, no? And I would always tell the wives, no? It's temporary lang yan, okay? That's part of our sanctifying process. And alam nyo anong sabi ni Jesus dyan? Pray for those who make you suffer. <laughs> okay, so, sabi nga, no, we are most effective. Can we have the slide? We are most effective after. May purpose talaga ang suffering. We are, because we are most effective after we have been greatly bruised and broken. No? And an aroma pleasing to the Lord rises from our own suffering. Do you agree with me? Sabi nga, no, ng isang writer, our greatest our most powerful testimony comes from our deepest pain. Do you agree with me, no? Si Jesus nga, no, our Messiah was a suffering Messiah. So, okay lang yan kung na may pain ka ngayon. Anong sabihan mo, sabihin mo sarili mo? Temporary lang yan, okay? And then, number three, Jesus knows their poverty. Ano yung una? Jesus knows their performance. Number two, Jesus knows their pain. Number three, Jesus knows their poverty. Okay. So this church is commended not because they have big buildings, not because their pastors are famous, not because mayaman ang, ang pastor or ang mga miembro ng church na ito. Alam nyo ba, ang ibig sabihin daw ng, ng poverty dun sa, dun sa binasa natin, di ba? Balikan nga natin yung binasa natin. Sabi doon, uh, I know your poverty. Alam nyo ba ano daw ang ibig sabihin ng poverty na yan? Meaning, they have absolutely nothing. Wala, wala talaga, walang wala, no, pag standard ng world ang tinitingnan. Pero, this is what is amazing. Walang wala sila, pero ang tingin ni Jesus sa kanila, they are very rich. Whew, isn't that encouraging? You know, Si Jesus nakikita niya yung mga helpless state natin minsan. Tayo no as a church, we have no political influence. Wala tayong political clout. Wala tayong social, masyadong social influence from the world standard. But we are spiritually rich before the Lord. That's Smyrna. Kung ang CCF ay kay ang tingnan ni Lord, no, ano kaya tayo, no? Wala tay building nasunugan pa tayo o di ba no wala tayo have nothing na wala lahat okay but we are spiritually rich do you agree with me okay alam niyo ba no ito na isip ko ang world the world has a way of making us feel we are so poor tingin ka lang kun sa facebook 
tingin ka sa mga advertisements, parang tingin mo, wow, napaka-favored, napaka-blessed naman nila. Bakit ako hindi? ba? Diba? No, tingin ka sa mga advertisement para bang, wow, hindi ko kayang bilhin yan. Parang the world is telling you, you don't have this, you don't have that. No? Kaya parang feeling mo, poor na poor ka talaga. Tama ba ako o hindi? No? No, that, that at times we feel we are not measuring up. That at times we feel that we we are not good enough. Di ba marami tayong mga ganyang feelings? I, in fact, I heard of of a leader na nagsabi na dahil sa mga post niya, Tora, feeling ko ako walang wala. Yung mga ganun, di ba? Ganyan po ang world, no? Alam nyo ang Smyrna at that time, um, there were trade guilds, no? Trade guilds. So kung guild ng, ng ano, pottery, ng clothing, iba-ibang business, may mga membership. Kung hindi ka member, then you may not be what? You may, wala kang business kung hindi ka member. Kasi noon, pag nagpa-member ka, you need to be part of their, yung kanilang mga um, celebrations, yung kanilang mga, kanilang mga rituals. At ang mga rituals nila doon, ino-offer nila sa kanilang gods and goddesses. Yan po ang ginagawa ng trade guilds. So if you're not part of the trade guild, then wala ka, you, you have no gold, you have no silver, walang wala ka. Walay ganansya, no? Walay, uh, walay negosyo ang inchik pag hindi part ng trade guild. Ganyan noon. So they were the Christians who were not compromising, who didn't want to take part of their rituals, were actually what? They were, they were cast away, no? They were actually uh, not included. At saka, syempre, yung iba nga hindi lang sila discriminated against no Christian yan hindi natin yan isali kundi kino-confiscate pa yung mga properties nila kino-confiscate pa yung mga goods nila ganyan po katindi ang persecution sa Smyrna at that time okay pero the Lord says you are rich you have no gold you have no silver you're not part of their flourishing business but Jesus said you are rich. Okay? So, totoo talaga yung sabi sa Mark 10, 29 to 30. Sabi dun, Assuredly, I say to you, this is Jesus saying, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife, children or lands for my sake and the gospel who shall not. So, ibig sabihin na if you, if you left no, minsan pinipersecute tayo ng ating mga sariling mga relatives, sariling mga loved ones. Pero sabi ni Lord, no? Itong mga pinipersecute na ito, they will, sige, next slide, they will 30, verse 30. Sabi doon, no? They will inherit houses, brothers and sisters and mothers or fathers and this would refer to our spiritual family. So minsan iwanan tayo ng mga biological uh, uh, relatives natin or loved ones. Pero sabi ni Lord, you will have your spiritual family. You will have brothers, sisters, father, mother, or wife, or children, or lands. Yan ang sabi. At sinabi pa doon, no? And in the age to come, eternal life. Okay? Eternal life. So, you are not poor, but you are rich. Because even if you are persecuted, even if all the others would leave you, you still have your spiritual family and you shall have eternal life. Okay? Yan po ang sabi ng Mark 10, 29 to 30. Tapos sa Ephesians 1, 3, ito, pakinggan nyo to. I so love these verses. Sabi doon, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You take note who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Okay? Look at that. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ano ibig sabihin dyan? Pag nasa kay Christ tayo, we have spiritual blessings. That is why one who is in Christ is never poor. Okay? Pag na kay Lord tayo, hindi talaga tayo poor. And if you read on, sinabi dyan kung ano yung mga blessings natin. Okay? Just as He chose us in Him, pinili ka ni Lord before the foundation of the world, 
that we should be holy. Hindi ka pa pinanganak, pinili ka na ni Lord, that we should be holy without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption, giadapt ka na anak ni Lord, and a sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted. Next slide. Tina natin, in the Beloved. Okay, adopted and accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood. Okay, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace which He made to abound toward us, toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Ulitin ko lang po, spiritually rich for as long as you are in Christ. No one is poor na na kay Lord. Okay? From the verses that we read, ano yung mga blessings natin? Doon sa Mark kanina, we will have spiritual family. Diba? How many of you, you're thankful that you belong to a spiritual family? Okay? No? Hindi perfect na family, but joyful and loving spiritual family. Is that amen? No? At ano pa ang sinabi na blessing? Eternal life. Ha? Ha? Eternal life. Ito ang hinahanap ng mga tao forever. No, in Christ, merong forever. Merong eternal life. At saka sa Ephesians, ano yung mga blessings doon? Chosen in Christ. Gusto kong, gusto kong tandaan nyo itong mga spiritual blessings na ito. Chosen in Christ. Imagine out of the many millions of people no, in the world, out there, Ikaw yung pinili at ikaw yung tinawag ni Lord. Are you happy? That's a spiritual blessing. And ikaw ay adopted. No? Yung iba gusto magpa-adapt sa mga mayayaman para secure ang future. Ikaw, adapted ka ng King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay? And another blessing, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Meaning, you are rescued. no? Rescued from a miserable sinful life. Yan po, kahit si Thor, hindi niya kayang gawin yan. Sino dyan? No, idol niyo si Thor. Okay. No? At saka ito pa, forgiven from sins. No? Isang spiritual blessing natin is forgiven from sins. You are freed from that dirty and dark world. No? So, ang dami nating spiritual blessings. Kaya nga, yan ang sinasabi ni Jesus na I came to give you Abundant life, okay? So you see, the church in Smyrna doesn't have what this world offers. Wala sila yung kung ano yung ino-offer ng world, pero rich sila. Kaya sabihan mo ang, ang, ang sarili mo, I am rich, okay? I am rich. Kahit wala kang silver, wala kang gold. Pero alam nyo, may sabihin ako sa inyo, uso ngayon ang barter, pwedeng mag-barter. Ano ala alam niyo ano ang iba barter niyo no para magkaroon kayo ng spiritual blessings para maging rich kayo ang ibarter niyo lang is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ no bigyan niyo lang ang faith no nilagay ko dito faith in Christ Jesus is take all all in okay barter lang kailangan okay so walang rich or walang poor na anak those who are in Christ Jesus. Number four, Jesus knows their persecution. No? Kita ni Lord ang mga persecution. Sabi nga, doon sa verse na binasa natin, I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy or abuse. No, yung ginagawa sa inyo na blasphemy, abuse or slander. Those who say they are Jews and are not, but they are part of the synagogue of Satan. Alam nyo, gusto kong tandaan nyo to. Dito sa seven letters ni Jesus sa sa churches, four times gimension si Satan. Alam nyo ba yun? No? Nasa Revelation 2.9, na-mention din si Satan sa 2.13, na-mention din si Satan sa 2.24, at na-mention din si Satan sa Revelation 3.9. Itong references na ito kay Satan, tayong mga anak ni Lord, lalo na tayong mga leaders, should make us highly aware, no? na si Satan is so antagonistic and so hostile sa mga anak ni Lord. Nandyan talaga, Satan is real, okay? Kaya dapat aware tayo sa mga schemes niya. Ano ang ibig sabihin nito? 
Ibig sabihin, pag may nag-slander sa'yo, may pag may nag-persecute sa'yo, ibig sabihin, wag mong kalimutan na ang tunay mong kalaban ay si Satanas. Hindi yung office mate mo na nag-persecute sa'yo. Hindi yung asawa mo. Hindi yung mga tao ang, nag- ang kalaban mo. Actually, ang kalaban mo, yung spirito na nasa kanila. Okay? Nag-gets natin yan. Basahin natin sa Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against, sino daw ang kalaban natin? Hindi yung flesh and blood. Hindi yung nakikita natin na ating mga 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 relatives or mga friends or office mates na nagapersecute sa atin pero sino daw ang gina-wrestle natin against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places okay so yan po no wag mong kalabanin ang mga nagpe-persecute sa iyo ng mga flesh and blood kundi pag-pray mo sila dahil merong spirit behind them di ba sabi nga ni Lord pray for those who persecute you that's in Matthew 5:44 okay so itong church po na ito walang criticism against them walang reprimand no sa church na ito pero merong warning si Lord dahil sabi doon no Some of you will be put to prison. Some of you, no, will be imprisoned. And some of you will even be what? Will even be um, endangered. Na ang, sa, ang iba sa inyo will suffer to the point of death, sabi ni Jesus. Okay? Pero, sabi ni Jesus, ito yung promise niya sa mga nag, na, nag-suffer ngayon. Itong promise niya sa mga gina-persecute ngayon. One of my favorite verses, Revelation 2.10, Be faithful to death and I will give you the crown of life. Okay? So, be faithful. How many of you are suffering now? How many of you are persecuted now? Ang promise ni Lord, you will have the crown of life. Okay. So, apparently po, and it's very clear na itong suffering church na ito, yung hardship nila, yung tests nila, produce you listen to this it produced exactly the right kind of response it produced exactly the right kind of result when you when you go through suffering ano yung result they remained pure they remained faithful so sa atin ngayon mga kapatid no katulad ng church ng Smyrna kaalam nyo ba A lot of Christians are suffering persecution all over the world. May papakita ako sa inyo mamaya, no? Ang iba, very obvious. Ang iba naman, insidious. Ano, ano, alam niyo anong ibig sabihin na insidious? Meaning, subtle. Subtle na persecution. Yung iba talagang pinapatay. Very violent, no? Na, na mga Christians physically assaulted talaga sila. Harassed, no? Jailed. Yung iba, ginapreso and sometimes martyred no pinapatay talaga pero no i'd like to tell you na it is in these sufferings it is in these afflictions that these christians experience the supernatural power of facing any kind of suffering for as long as jesus is in your heart pero kuminsan katulad sa atin dito sa pilipinas ang suffering subtle, di ba? Wala pa namang namamatay sa atin dito sa Pilipinas. And we are so blessed, no? Like, ang suffering natin minsan is loss of job. Hindi ka na i-renew, kaya Christian yan siya, di ba? Or ikaw yung magiging target of jokes. Binuangan ka, yaga-yagaan ka. Ay, grabe ako kay Bible. Ay, praise the Lord. That's a kind of insidious suffering, di ba? Yung iba naman, mawala ng kaibigan. Ako, nawalan talaga ako ng maraming kaibigan. Okay? And it's heartbreaking. But, no, kung para kay Lord, you're going to endure it. No? At ito, kung if you choose to live a godly life, we have been preaching about this, no? then you are going to be persecuted. Okay? So, for our application ngayon, mga kapatid, mga leaders, anong klaseng suffering are you going through right now? Don't tell me perfect ang buhay mo. 
I'm sure lahat tayo, no? Lahat kahit ako while I'm speaking, no? Nagago through din ako ng suffering, no? Mga afflictions. Anong klaseng afflictions meron ka ngayon? Sabi nga, no, sa Bible, no, ito ang ibig sabihin ng mga sufferings ng mga Christians. Na if you're a Christian, a true follower of Jesus, a Christian suffers well. You see? It's not about health and wealth, no? Mayaman ka, no? Kaya nga nung nasunugan tayo, siguro ang sabi ng mga ibang tao, ayan, no? Anong klaseng church yan? Sinunog, kinuha lahat ni Lord. I'm sure, no? Meron mga ganun na nagsabi against us. Pero, no, I'm sure na kahit ganyan ang tingin ng world sa atin, si Lord, I know, He's saying, you are rich. Is that amen, no? So, hindi tayo maano na, kasi na, narinig ko to ay, ang church na yan, maraming problema yan. Hindi yan love ni Lord kasi maraming problema. Smyrna is a very good example of a suffering church and yet a church that Jesus appreciates most. Is that amen? No, para sa akin, I'd rather be poor and commended by the first and the last. No, I'd rather be poor and commended by the first and the last, no? Than a church na hindi naman natuwa si Lord. So you see Christianity even before it was born has already experienced persecution. Jesus when he was just a baby, no? He tried na siya patayin ni Herod. Diba? So, right now, I'd like to show you some videos of very recent. Mula pa noon hanggang ngayon, ang Christianity has been going through a lot of suffering. But I'm gonna show you, tayo dito sa Pilipinas, hindi natin ito feel masyado. Because our, our suffering is not that uh, violent. No? It's not that kind of very, very obvious. Pero tingnan nyo itong churches doon sa China, doon sa Iraq, and even do, doon sa Indonesia. I'd like you to watch this, okay? Sige, watch muna natin. Here in China, there is such darkness. But even in the midst of this darkness, we are experiencing God's victory. I became a believer 10 years ago. I heard about Christ when I was on a business trip. After that, my entire family came to Christ. But we are not free to share our faith with others. If you are spreading the gospel, Chinese government treat you as a criminal. They want to control the number of Christians want to control what God is doing. I hear from time to time of brothers and sisters being persecuted and arrested. Last week, a good friend of mine was taken by the Chinese police. He was questioned and then beaten so bad that he almost died, all because of spreading the gospel. In the city, everywhere you look, there are apartments. Since we can't meet in public, our ministry takes place in the buildings we live in. In the evenings, brothers and sisters in Christ gather together in homes. This is our church. If you ask people on the street, most have never heard of Christ or read the Bible. No one in their family is a believer. The dangers here are driven by darkness, and that darkness can be quite fearful, especially when I think of my family. But God never fears. 
and He will overcome. So I want to go and share, despite being at risk. I minister to the neighbors that live next door or upstairs. I visit them often. I listen and I share in their life. When I get the chance, I tell the story of Jesus Christ and we pray. And the Holy Spirit works. Every week, we see new people come to Christ. Only two weeks ago, an amazing thing happened. We discovered there was another home church meeting at the top of this very same building. In our own building, God had brought up another fellowship. That really humbled us. In the midst of all the darkness, all the persecution, the Holy Spirit is moving. He continues to prepare the hearts of people in China. Every day, I have the opportunity to share the love of Jesus Christ, even if it means I could go to prison. For who can have victory over God? Nobody, no matter what country. في حد ماشي وراك؟ لا مفيش حد ورايا In over 60 countries around the world, Christians are routinely persecuted and oppressed for their faith. Living openly as a Christian or sharing God's word with family or friends in these hostile nations brings the risk of violence, imprisonment, and sometimes even death. Open Doors works in the most oppressive countries, strengthening Christians to stand strong in the face of persecution and equipping them to shine Christ's light in these dark places. In every hostile culture, the biggest challenge these Christians face in their oppressive countries is the same. Isolation from God's Word and from the body of Christ. That is why the number one request from these believers is the same. Please pray for me. Persecuted Christians don't want to stand alone. They need to know others are standing with them. For more than 50 years, God has uniquely equipped open doors to serve where persecution and isolation are fiercest. Here, in the darkest corners of the earth, open doors can be found, reinforcing spiritual courage by supplying Bibles, training Christian leaders, developing Christian communities, as well as providing prayer, presence, and advocacy for these suffering believers. God is using open doors to break through the isolation of secret and persecuted believers, empowering them to bring light, even to these, the darkest of places.
Millions of Christians long for a Bible of their own. They want the hope and spiritual courage God's Word provides. Time and again, we have seen when local Christians are equipped with Bibles, they find renewed hope and demonstrate God's forgiveness, even reaching out in love to their oppressors. God has uniquely positioned open doors to serve Christians in countries where the gospel is not welcome. We have seen the power of God's Word in hostile places. Its power enables Christians to live and share the gospel. Its truth touches individuals, families, communities, and nations. Your prayers turn the fear and isolation of these believers into joy and hope. Providing a Bible to one of these believers sows a seed of spiritual growth that never stops multiplying. God's Word is living and powerful and can radically change the lives of even those who are most opposed to it. I believed in Jesus through watching the Jesus film and reading the Bible. And at the fifth grade of primary school, I accepted Jesus as the savior of my life. I'm from a Muslim family. One of the days in the year 2003, my father called me and he gave me two options, either to leave Jesus or to leave the family. My belief in Jesus is much stronger than any other relation that I have got. That's why I quit everything and kept Jesus. The Muslim radical shouted, demanding heavy punishment, as heavy as possible. They came every day. After my father was told of my imprisonment, he said, I am proud of my daughter for the suffering she experienced for Christ. This is a great thing that God is doing in your life. So don't expect to get out of prison too soon. Just finish what the Lord has assigned you to do. Just keep on preaching the gospel. In a letter dated January 10, 1994, my father wrote, I praise the Lord that in the midst of the heavy attack on the fast-growing Church of Jesus Christ, the Lord has given the joy of the privilege of suffering for His name to all members of the Church. Please don't worry about me. I'm quite ready for anything. Nine days after this letter, uh, that was written by Hayek, he was martyred. Two months ago, one of my father's neighbors gave me a call and told me that your sister had just died. I went to the funeral, but my whole family came against me. They kicked me, and they beat me, and I had two broken ribs. This is truly a time of suffering because I got separated from my family. My children need their mother beside them because they are still small. And I miss them terribly too. But God's grace is sufficient. Pastor Haik, he was so humble and he had peace in his heart. When I see him in heaven, I'm going to say, thank you. You are the one who caused me to love Jesus. At his funeral, they gave us a booklet with Brother Hike's biography. And this verse was written in the first page. I read it there and I will never forget it. The persecution and the suffering we went through, really, it is nothing compared to the glory of God. 
I came to understand the beauty of the unity of the body of Christ and how when one part suffers, all the parts suffer. So in the future, I want to do the same thing for other Christians who are suffering for Christ. My sister is gone now, but what gives me more comfort about her is that before she died, she made her decision to follow Jesus Christ, and she died serving Him. When Brother Hike was with us, his words were with us. He ministered to us each day. But even in his death, God did such great things. I want him to know this. I want him to see that his blood was not useless. After they killed you, so many like me came to Christ. And now I am ready to die for Jesus too. My desire is to see the children I taught become amazing people of God. My prayer is that these children become people who fear the Lord, that they will love reading the Bible and praying. I want them to excel in life and become people who are not afraid to suffer for the Lord. So, I'd like to end with this. Real Christians know how to suffer well. And they don't give up. Sabihan mo ang sarili mo, Lord, I won't give up. Now, because real Christians keep eternity in mind. We keep eternity in mind. And it's okay with making sacrifices for our faith in Christ Jesus. Kumusta kapatid? Kumusta ka? What are you willing to sacrifice for Christ Jesus? Remember Smyrna. Say it with me. Every time you remember, you say the word Smyrna, be reminded of this suffering church. Smyrna is from the word myrrh. Mer, no, yung mapait na plant na yun, No, It's a suffering church. Okay? So, kumusta kapatid? Si Lord lang. No, only Jesus sees your suffering right now. And I pray now when He looks at us facing a suffering, no, sabihin ni Lord, you are poor, but you are rich. God bless us all. Hope to hear from you. Love you.